All right, guys. Funny co uh, contrast. Last time I was hitching up, the RV was dirty and the car was clean. Now the car is dirty and this RV is clean for the most part. Turns out, by the way, the RV I picked up the first time, that Class C, looked so bad because it was a, uh, a sent back unit. It already had 1,100 miles on it. Um, I think somebody took it to a dealer and it got rejected for an issue and it was brought back to the factory. So anyway, we're going to check this one out, make sure there's no dings, dents, scratches, blemishes, anything that will look bad on me when I get to the dealer I'm going to. Let's give it a quick walk around. Little rock chips, things like that. Tiny little rock chips are not really uh, any, any of our concern too much. That's just kind of uh, nature of being on the road. This one looks okay. And these are all-wheel drive. That's what I dig about them, man. All-wheel drive is a good time of year for that. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and get her hitched up. Alright folks, we are hitched up. It didn't take too long. Everything worked out pretty well. I always like to come back, double check. Got all my pins. Everything latched on. Safety cables. Latched, latched. Alright, we're hitched up. We're going to go up here to the gate guard and get the okay. Make sure I got the right unit. Good thing about uh, the driveways because you kind of have to get the right unit because they give you the keys and they only work for the one they give you. Um, in the old days, before we had lot guards, when I first started and we just did mostly towaways, which is mostly what I do anyway, we, uh, you're on your own. So you'd be in the middle of the night hooking up to a trailer in your truck and you hope you had the right one. There were times people got halfway across the country if they left on a Friday, They'd get to the lot, uh, the office Monday morning. They'd see the trailer they were supposed to take was still there. They'd call the driver and say, "You got to come back, brother. You got the wrong trailer." So, luckily that never happened to me, but um, it has happened. All right, we got the right RV. That's good. This one does not have a rear-facing camera, but it's got rear windows, and I can actually see my car in the rearview mirror. So. That's all I'm worried about, make sure my car is okay. We are gonna get the heck out of Elkhart. Man, they got some weather up here. Woo! And I heard they got another big one coming in this coming week, so. Yes, I'll put my seatbelt on. So I may be staying home this coming up week, we'll see. Cause I've been fighting snow all winter. Or if I do come up take anything, I'm making sure it's one of these all wheel drive deals. They actually have these giant Super C all wheel drives. They're on a, uh, a Dodge or a Ford, either a Dodge 5500 chassis or a Ford 550 chassis. They are badass. Four wheel drive, diesel, monsters, man. Those are nice. Um, I'll take one of those soon and absolutely make a video about it. So, uh, a lot of people, the big argument these days is between the Ford Transit and the Mercedes Sprinter. Um, I'm not going to tell anybody which way to go, but I'll tell you my thoughts on it. The uh, diesel and the Sprinter is what everybody likes. Well, back in the day when diesels were not obligated to have all these emissions like they do now, which is just ridiculous. Diesels are not supposed to have emissions. Um, they were great. You know, they, they lasted forever. They got phenomenal fuel mileage. Um, they don't anymore. They actually don't get any better mileage than these EcoBoost gas engines now. So then you're just paying more for diesel fuel. You're paying for diesel exhaust fluid and uh, fuel filters, things like that. And if you had to have somebody work on it, that's gonna cost you a lot more to get somebody to work on a diesel. If you gotta work on it yourself, it's a much bigger pain in the ass to work on those new diesels. So, and they just don't drive as good. These new Ford Transits, man, they handle like a car. They're awesome. Uh, the Mercedes are, like I say, in their day, they were great, but they've just uh, fallen behind the times. I feel like they've rested on their laurels, you know? That's just my opinion. Somebody brought it up on a uh, Facebook post, fans of Moto Vans, which I follow. So, and I was commenting on it just yesterday. So, 
Uh, I can usually, when I don't have a car behind this, I can easily get in the teens, 15 to 16 miles per gallon. With my car, I can still get in the 14 mile per gallon range uh, with this thing. And man, it will scoot. This uh, 3.5 EcoBoost has got some grunt. It will it'll giddy up. Um, so I like them. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop yapping and let y'all just uh, enjoy the ride. Hey, hey, so we made it to our destination. I think I did about 750 miles today. It's a, it's a pretty long day. I wouldn't want to do that every day. Um, and really, legally, you can't if you're logging the whole thing. But the first uh, 600 miles today was um, in my car. So that's one good thing about doing uh, driveaways is you don't have to log coming back when you're in your personal car. If I'm in my truck pulling a trailer, I got to do a log book both ways. So, wouldn't be able to get away with that. Either way, 750 miles, that's just a lot of miles. So I'm worn out, I'm at my, one of my favorite little truck stops. Definitely the favorite one on my route between home and uh, work. So, I should only have about a little less than 600 miles tomorrow and I should make it home if everything goes well. It is cold out, it is 13 degrees outside, it feels colder than that. And I'm gonna hunker down and um, call it a night. I'm pretty worn out. So, see you guys tomorrow and we'll go over uh, more about the van. So far, we're doing good though. I'm getting about 13 and a half miles per gallon uh, pulling my little car. This is the all wheel drive version, so you're gonna get a little bit less mileage on that. So, yeah, you could definitely get uh, 14 or even 15 with the two wheel drive uh, version of this van. So, talk to you guys later. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I just left the truck stop in Minden, Ohio, about 7.15 a.m. Um, would have left earlier, but I had to drive until 9.15 p.m. And if uh, anybody knows uh, the logbook procedure, you gotta stop for 10 hours. It's just standard. So, uh, a little chilly last night. Again, got down in the low teens. Not horrible, though. Um, windy again today. Uh, but this Class B definitely slices through the wind quite a bit better than a Class C. That's obvious. Uh, that's probably I mean, that's the advantage of having a Class B. That's why you would have it. It's just more maneuverable, drives better. But the disadvantage is size. Um, but man, the, the drive is so much better. The thing about a Class B and a Class A is the bodies are not, you know, they're not all one piece, obviously. A Class C is a giant shell put onto a cab chassis band. Uh, a lot of rattles, a lot of fiberglass, you know, this is just basically a standard cargo van that is all one piece and it's really decked out on the inside, obviously. So, yeah, I think a Class B would probably be my choice, not to mention fuel mileage, much, much better. Um, it just started today, but uh, as of yesterday, I got about 13 and a half towing, towing my little car behind me. So we're gonna head, uh, we're on 33, which is incidentally the road I grew up on. Um, just in Virginia, not Ohio. And incidentally, this is the road that my office is on in Indiana. So we're gonna head, uh, where are we going to? Pretty much take this all the way to Columbus, Ohio. Go around Columbus, back on 33. Uh, take that through Athens, Ohio, all the way down to the uh, West Virginia state line and get on 77, which takes us down to 64 at Charleston. And shoot all the way uh, across 64 to where it meets up at 81 for a minute, branches back off onto its own in Waynesboro, and then take that all the way to my house in Goochland, Virginia. The Gooch, that's where we're headed. Uh, inclines uh, as far as interstates go especially 
northeast of the Mississippi. Um, it's among the steepest ones in the country, but it's just not as long. But the point is, uh, we're toting up this hill like it's nothing. Um, yeah, these cars are passing me, but it's just because they had the crew set at 62. And uh, we are just rolling up this hill. It doesn't even seem to be sweating. Um, so yeah, these little 3.5 EcoBoost, man, they have got some massive torque and they pull really good. Um, of course, the big old Godzilla V8s and the big Class Cs will do it. But man, when they're doing it, they are making some racket and burning some fuel. Um, still averaging over 12. We've been in the mountains pretty much all day today. Uh, I think we're probably back to 13 miles per gallon by the time we get to our destination. Probably making it back to my house tonight and, uh, and then from there it's only about 25 miles tomorrow morning to the uh, dealer. So uh, yeah I like how these things handle. On the downhills you know, again you just set the cruise, it taps the brake for you, it downshifts for you, whatever it needs to do to keep you at the same speed. 10 speed transmission is really nice. Uh, you can kind of tell, I think they're um, somewhat adaptive. You can kind of tell it starts changing shift points throughout the trip and everything. Uh, but man, it's super smooth, but real crisp and firm at the same time. Um, pretty impressive. Yeah, a, lot, a lot different than the old uh, four speed slush boxes they made back in the day. That's for sure. So uh, we're getting ready to get off here and about uh, when we get to Lexington and get a little more fuel. This should be the last fuel stop for the trip. And uh, hopefully get her on home tonight. And then we'll take a look around inside. Good morning, everybody. We are sitting at 13.6 miles per gallon as of uh, all day yesterday. That's what we ended up with, and that's coming through the mountains and not too bad. So we're at my house this morning. We got here last night. Got to sleep in my own bed last night. I'm gonna head to the dealer this morning, so I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour. Uh, like I say, these videos are more about how these things drive than the actual amenities and all, but I'll tell you, for one person, I think this would be the way to go. Driving these things is like driving a minivan. They drive so well, so quiet, no rattling. I mean, quiet engine, everything. It's, it's a luxury vehicle um, that drives like a car. It's pretty impressive. Uh, but you got nearly a full-size fridge, microwave, overhead AC unit I imagine that would freeze you out in this little place so that's no problem um, the bed uh, I believe that turns into a queen or full I don't know if it's a specific size bed but I think everybody in RVs knows how these work they have those uh, boards that go across the middle on these runners right here and then the, uh, actually I think these go across that and that gives you a full-size bed you take the backs of the seats off and put those down as your mattress um, and a little kitchen Got a burner, sink, what else do you need? Everything covered. Um, shower in here, shower and head uh, combined. So, you know, you can do your business and take a shower at the same time. It's a uh, it's kind of cool concept there. I don't know why that's not more popular. Um, tons of storage in these things. Overhead cabinets, one, two, three, four on this side, two on that side. Pantry, I guess that would be. Uh, a little more storage up in here yep and up here you got all your controls your solar your water tank heaters uh, all your lights master lights on and off we're gonna turn those off but um, been a good one I don't know if I ever got a good look at this thing outside for you guys let's see here there we go but uh good looking vehicle I like it better than the Mercedes I think maybe I'm just tired of looking at the Mercedes but one thing I like over these these over the Mercedes is the rear wheels the on a Mercedes the uh, when you got a dually rear the second set of tires is inside instead of on the outside I feel like them being on the outside uh, gives a little more stability and I, personally I think you can feel it or maybe it's just the way the chassis is set up but it definitely feels a lot less topsy-turvy is that a word a lot less uh, wallowy <laughs> than the Mercedes does in similar situations when you got to turn quickly or maneuver quickly or whatever but she's a pretty sleek looking vehicle so that is a beyond by coachman I don't know how big they are I think they bill them as 22 feet something like that 
but um got the 3.5 eco boost i don't know you guys can google the horsepower and torque but i can tell you it's it's a lot whatever it is it's it gets up and goes and it doesn't seem like it's struggling it just kind of pulls at really low rpm and when you do got to wind it out going up a hill it's smooth it doesn't sound thrashy um man i mean at no point could i not accelerate going up any of the hills i've been through on the way home so there's the old diesel that i usually pull my campers with the old 12 valve cummins man as reliable as a hammer all right we're gonna get on down the road it's about 25 miles or so to the dealer and uh we'll see you guys later